Miss Rose, I apologize it took me so long to prepare this message. I had to beg for understanding and revelation and I had to do a lot of research in the midst of um, preparing these other messages. I hope you enjoy it. So the title is Eye of the Dove. I want to welcome you saints and citizens of New Jerusalem. I know you're going to like this, Miss Verona Rose. Let's get right into the text. And we have four subsequent texts that we're going to be actually diving into. And one specific word. Let's take a few seconds to uh, worship the king before we get in so that our spirit is able to receive and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you right now. We worship you even right now. We entreat your spirit to be with us. In us. With us. And we thank you even right now. We worship you. You're a good and holy father. A righteous and holy and good father. We want to join in unity. In unity. In praise and worship. Corporate anointing is wonderful. And I promise you, you can get it anywhere. At any time. Just call upon him. And he will answer. Okay. Eye of the Dove. Matthew 3.16 When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Mark 1.10 And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Hallelujah. Luke 3.22 And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son, in whom in you I am well pleased. Hallelujah. John 1.32 And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I want to just point out a particular note. All four disciples recorded this. The word says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. All four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recorded seeing this. Hallelujah. That's what happened to me. I had to learn how to practice, and still do, allowing the dove which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, to rest upon me. And as you practice more and more, allowing the Holy Spirit to indwell and rest in you and lead and guide you, it's a glorious occasion. Principalities and powers cannot stand. <sighs> Hallelujah. They are consumed by the fire of the living God. So I thought you might like this, sister. The Hebrew meaning of the word, dove, yonah, it is a feminine noun. It comes from an unused root meaning to effervesce, yayin, to effervesce, hallelujah, wine. As fermented by implication intoxicating banqueting wine or wine bibber so I asked the Holy Spirit what does this mean the Spirit of the Living God 
as you engage in relationship with him. And he begins to indwell in you and fill you up and walk with you. And you begin to walk with him in life. It's intoxicating to people. It makes them feel good. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but those who are being saved, it is the power of God. To those who are perishing, it might make them a little uncomfortable. And when I say perishing, I don't mean like uh, suffering with tribulation. I mean um, existing in the mindset and choice to not believe any manner of truth concerning spiritual edification or fellowship with our Father and our Savior, Christ Jesus. Now, I always say our Father more so than I say Christ Jesus because, hallelujah, the, the reason why Christ Jesus came was to reconcile the relationship between the Father of Spirits and His children. Hallelujah. That's what we want. A relationship with the Father of Lights. I want to uh, help us understand further. Effervesce. This is from the 1928 Noah Webb. Oh, I'm sorry. 1818. 1828 Noah Webster's American Dictionary of the English Language. Effervesce. Verb. Intransitive. Effervesce. Latin. Effervesco. From... Fervio, to be hot, Whew, hallelujah, to rage, to be in natural commotion, like liquor when gently boiling, to bubble and hiss as fermenting liquors or any fluid, when some part escapes in an elastic form, to work as new wine. And then we are supposed to see feverant. And that is to say, Latin. For beans, from fervio, to be hot, to boil, to glow. Hot, boiling, as a fervent summer. Fervent blood, hot in temperature. Vehement, they are fervent to dispute. Number three, ardent, very warm, warm, earnest, exciting, animated, glowing, as fervent zeal, fervent piety. Fervent in spirit. Romans 12, 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Whew. We worship your name for this understanding. So what are we saying in the subsequent text of, oh, hallelujah, bless your name. We worship you. John 1, 32. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. When the Spirit of the living God rests upon you, when you put yourself in position, or you make the choice that you're going to walk in the Spirit, you will be on fire. Can you imagine that? Permanently on fire, permanently hot, permanently boiling. A vehement hatred toward evil, and a permanent vehement, fervent love for all that is of a good nature, which is our Father of lights and spirits. We worship your holy name. We thank you even right now for this revelation. Father, we thank you that we're hot for you. We're boiling. We thank you that when we ask you to bless us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is a free gift. It is to be given to all your children for the seal of perfection, to seal us up, Father. We thank you you give us fervor and passion to be able to love and to be able to walk in truth with our brothers and our sisters and our family. We thank you for putting a desire in our heart to reconnect with our family members and to get close and to forgive them and to love them. We know that the time is short, and that's why we thank you for coming alongside us and making us, uh, hallelujah, we thank you for fervently and passionately loving us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we bless your name. 
Now, the Matthew Henry commentary, verses 32 through 34. That John the Baptist saw it, he bore record, did not relate it as a story, but solemnly attested it with all the seriousness and solemnity of witness bearing. He made affidavit of it. I saw the spirit descending from heaven. Hallelujah. John could not see the spirit, but he saw the dove, which was a sign and representation of the spirit. The Spirit came now upon Christ both to make him fit for his work and to make him known to the world. Christ was notified, not by the descent of a crown upon him or by a transfiguration, but by the descent of the Spirit as a dove upon him to qualify him for his undertaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Twelve years ago, I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was given to me to empower me, to qualify me for the work that is to be done. First and foremost, it is to glorify Jesus and reveal to us what Christ is revealing to the Holy Spirit. Second, it is to empower you and give you strength. Hallelujah. Fire. It is a dove's eye, and the dove's eye is upon you even now. I, by the testimony of my own life, attest that the Spirit of the living God and the Holy Spirit is true. I also attest that any child of God that wants the free gift, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let, let us look at that promise. Let us, let us go and look at this promise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. I should have been uh, a little bit more prepared right now. The scripture's not coming to me. But I made this video for you, Miss Rose. And the reason why I did so is because your love for our Father is fervent. It is boiling. It bubbles forth. It bubbles out. Oh, new wine. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is what we want when we're dealing with our brothers and sisters around the world. We want, when they come into contact us, with us, we want to be fervent. We want to be glowing. We want to be, we want, when they come, oh my God, we thank you. When they engage in relationship with you, hallelujah, you want them to feel the warmth and the comfort and the love, that passionate pursuit of their soul and their spirit and their body. The desire to see them whole and healed. To see them progressing in life. Not with their heads down. Not all sad and depressed. Hallelujah. But joyful and passionately pursuing life in the fullness of it. It can be found in God and God alone. Father, we thank you for this 15 minutes. We ask that um, those who desire the gift of the Holy Spirit, we ask that the moment they pray for the gift, it is given to them immediately. And anything hindering their reception of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you reveal that thing to them. That they would be blessed to have the gift of the Holy Spirit. I love you very much, saints and citizens of New Jerusalem. Be fervent until next time. See you soon.